Hello, my name is Fulbert Baudouin and I'm going to talk about the piping and instrumentation diagrams. The first part concerns the various diagrams used in the chemical process industry. The chemical process industry is involved in the production of wide variety of products that improve the quality of our lives and generate income for companies and their stockholders. In general, chemical processes are complex, and chemical engineers in industry encounter a variety of chemical process flow diagrams. These processes often involve substances of high chemical reactivity, high toxicity, and high corrosiveness operating at high pressures and temperatures. These characteristics can lead to a variety of potentially serious consequences including explosions, environmental damage, and stress to people's health. It is essential that errors or omissions resulting for, from miscommunication between people and or groups who are involved in design and operations do not occur when dealing with chemical processes. Visual information is the clearest way to present materials and is least likely to be misinterpreted. For these reasons, it is essential that chemical engineers be able to formulate appropriate process diagrams and be skilled at analyzing and interpreting diagrams prepared by others. Several types of process flow diagrams are used by chemical engineers depending on the level of detail required. Furthermore, these di diagrams will be used by safety engineers to identify and then to analyze the risk of the chemical process. For instance, such a diagram is used when ASOP is conducted to check and investigate the design of all facilities in order to identify any potential hazard and operability problems which could arise particularly through deviation for the design intent. A set of lists of required actions and recommendations to improve and mitigate the consequences to the problems ident identified or to hazard will be recorded and presented in the form of a HAZOP report. The HAZOP review is based on the PFT, PNID and other project documents. Only the latest issue of the documents shall be used for the HAZOP study. As you can see on this figure, these documents are issued at a more advanced stage of engineering issued for ASOP. The P and ID used for ASOP have to show all the equipment, instruments, check valves, safety valves, etc. that are included in the design. The basic ASOP method is used to specify the node, the expected behavior and the effect of deviations. This method is used to identify hazard to health and safety as well as operability issues which might impact profitability or the environment. In this part, we are going to focus on three diagrams that are important to chemical engineers. Block flow, also called BFD, process flow, also called PFD, and piping and instrumentation diagrams, also called PNID. Of these three diagrams, we find that the most useful to chemical engineers is the PNID. The crux of this part is understanding PNID. It is in fact the most common flow diagrams encountered in the chemical process industry. In short, BFD represents the entire process in a single sheet, whereas in the PFD you can find detailed information like plant operating condition or process flow. It is used as symbols to represent the equipment. PNID provides more detailed information compared to the previous two drawings. They use standard nomenclature, symbols and tag numbers to fully describe the process. These drawings are very useful and they convey the right amount of process information. This is needed during the various stages of bidding, engineering design, procurement, construction, as well as the operating and decommissioning phases of the process. 
The chemical process described throughout this part to illustrate the existing various diagrams is based on the hydrodealkylation of toluene to produce benzene. Indeed, this is a well-studied and well-understood commercial process still used today. Hydrodealkylination is a chemical reaction that often involves putting an aromatic hydrocarbon, such as toluene, in the presence of hydrogen gas to form a simpler aromatic hydrocarbon devoid of functional groups. This chemical usually occurs at high temperatures, at high pressure, or in the presence of catalysts. First, let's take a look at the block flow diagrams. This kind of diagrams can be used to give a rough idea of the global process flow structure and may be useful when giving a presentation. These diagrams consist of a series of blocks representing different equipment or unit operations that are connected by input and output streams. Important information such as operating temperatures pressures, conversions, and yield are included in the diagrams along with flow rates and some chemical compositions. However, the diagram does not include any details of equipment within any of the blocks. This figure shows the block flow diagram for the production of benzene. Toluene and hydrogen are converted in a reactor to produce benzene and methane. The reaction does not go to completion and excess toluene is required. The incondensable gases are separated out and discharged. The benzene products and the unreacted toluene are then separated by distillation. The toluene is then recycled back to the reactor and the benzene is removed from the product stream. In this example, Note that no instrumentation or actuator are shown on the BFD diagrams. To conclude, block diagrams are useful for representing a process in the simplified form in reports, textbooks, and presentations, but have limited use as engineering documents. For complex processes, their use is limited to showing the overall process broken down into its principal stages. Concerning the process flow diagrams, it represents a quantum step from the BFD in terms of the amount of information that it contains. The PFD contains the bulk of the chemical engineering data necessary for the design of the chemical process. For all the diagrams discussed in this part, there are no universally accepted standards. The PFD from one company will probably contain slightly different information from the PFD for the same process from another company. This said, it is true that most PFD convey very similar information. A typical commercial PFD will contain the following information. First, all the major pieces of equipment in the process are represented on the diagrams along with the description of the, the equipment. Each piece of equipment is assigned a unique equipment number and a descriptive name. Second, all process flow streams are shown and identified by a number. A description of process conditions and the chemical composition of each stream is included. These data are either displayed directly on the PFD or included in the accompanying flow summary table. Third, all utility streams supplied to major pieces of equipment that provide the process function are shown. And then, basic control loops, illustrating the control strategy used to operate the process during normal operation are shown. This PFD illustrates the location of the major pieces of equipment and the connections that the process trees make between pieces of equipment for the production of benzene. The location and interaction between these and the process streams are referred to as the process topology. Equipment is represented symbolically by icons that identify specific unit operations. Also, the, the American Society of Mechanical Engineers publishes a set of symbols to use in preparing flow sheets. It is not uncommon for companies to use in-house symbols. Whichever, 
set of symbols is used. There is a seldom a problem in identifying the operation represented by each icon. When referring to this kind of process diagrams, you can see that each of the process streams is identified by a number in a diamond box located on the stream. The direction of that stream is identified by one or more arrows. The process stream numbers are used to identify stream of the PFD. Also identified in this slide are utility streams. Utilities are required services that are available at the plant. Chemical plants are provided with a range of central utilities that include electricity, compressed air, cooling water, refrigerated water, steam, condensate return, inert gas for blanketing, chemical swover, wa wastewater treatment and flares. Contrary to the PFD diagrams, P and ID diagrams show the various control loops and instruments in details with an identification number. The primary goals of the designer when specifying instrumentation and control schemes are first, to keep the process variables with the known safe operating limits, second, to detect dangerous situations as they develop and to provide alarms and automatic shutdown systems, third, to provide interlocks and alarms to prevent dangerous operating procedures, fourth, to achieve the design product output and to maintain the product composition within the specified quality standard and finally to operate at the lowest production cost commensurate with the other objectives. These are not separate objectives and must be considered together. The order in which they are listed is not meant to imply the precedence of any one goal over another other than that of putting safety first. Product quality, production rate, and the cost of production are dependent on, on sales requirements. For example, it may be a better strategy to produce a better quality product at, at a higher cost. For example, it may be a better strategy to produce a better quality product at higher cost. In a typical chemical processing plant, these objectives are achieved by a combination of automatic control, manual monitoring, and laboratory analysis. In this slide, you can see the P and ID for the distillation part of the process in order to separate the benzene product from the unreacted toluene. This P and ID diagram shows the layout of the process equipment piping, pumps, instruments, valves, and other fittings. It includes all process equipment. These pieces of equipment have to be drawn roughly in proportion. All pipes are sometimes identified by a line number. The pipe size and type of construction material should be shown. The materials may be included as part of the line identification number. All valves, control and block valves, with an identification number. The tab may be shown by the symbol used for the valve or included in the code used for the valve number. Pumps are identified by a, by a suitable code number. The control loops and instruments with an identification number. To conclude, the diagram must use in the chemical process industry as a PFD and P and ID diagrams. Process flow diagrams are used in chemical and process engineering. This diagram shows the flow of chemicals and, and the, the equipment involved in the process. Generally, a process flow diagram shows only the major equipment and doesn't show details. PFD are used for visitor information and new employee training. A process and instrumentation drawing includes more details than a PFD. It includes major and minor flows, control loops, and instrumentations. P and ID sometimes referred to as a piping and instrumentation diagrams. These diagrams are also called flow sheets. P and ID are used by process technicians and instruments and electrical, mechanical, safety, and engineering personnel.
In both diagrams, a row shows the flow of materials and symbols show tanks, valves, and other equipment. So now, in the next part, we will have a look at notions of basic tagging conventions and control loops.